In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Saint John the Wonder Worker was known by that name even when he was still with us on this earth. I remember way back when I was still an Eastern Catholic monk and I decided to go to Holy Virgin Cathedral to take a peek at it for the second time. And uh, I met an elderly gentleman who was in front of the cathedral and he told me the story about the day that he, with his young child, when he was a young man and his little boy, was walking in front of the cathedral. And all of a sudden, his son had an asthma attack, a very bad one. And uh, just as Archbishop John was coming down the steps, and the Archbishop said, what is wrong with your son? And he said, he has asthma. And the Archbishop reached out and touched him on the head and said, no, he doesn't. And that was the last time his young boy had an asthma attack, it was gone. Another famous story is when he went to a hospital. In fact, he was known for being late for hierarchical services because if he was tending to somebody on their deathbed, he would wait until the last moment to go back to the cathedral. So there were people that were kind of all fussy about that, of course. But he went to this hospital because there was a parishioner of the cathedral, I believe, that had, was dying of rabies. And you know that once you have rabies, that's it. There's nothing that can be done. And so Archbishop John walked into the room and the staff of the hospital immediately said, no, no, you have to stop. You can't go in here. It's very contagious. You have to dress in a gown and a mask and the whole works. And he just pushed them aside in a gentle way, of course. And he said, I'm bringing this woman the body and blood of our Lord. It is for healing of soul and body. There's no way that I can get this disease. So he gave the woman communion from the little spoon. And that very moment, foam came out of her mouth. And the Archbishop retrieved the Holy Mysteries and took it into his own mouth. And of course, the hospital staff totally freaked out. And they said, you have to start the, the shots immediately. And he said, no, I don't. How can I get this when I've just received the gifts of body and blood of Christ? And he left. Then, of course, he never got anything. This is the same man that was, when he was the Archbishop of Shanghai in China, he would go out at night. He, first of all, he was known to stand in the window of his cell next to the cathedral and bless the people from his cell at night. But he also would go out and he would look for children who had been abandoned and he would take them to the convent and the nuns would care for the children. And so when he had to flee Shanghai for Paris, he became, he took all the children and went with his own expense, bought with the present day St. Tikon House in San Francisco and sent the nuns and these children there to be cared for safely. I remember once I was in a uh, Chinese restaurant in San Francisco and I overheard some people speaking Russian and I thought oh it must be some people from the cathedral and I looked up and they were Chinese they were his children that were still there still seeing him as their father this is Saint John Saint John when he was in Paris became known by the Parisians as Saint John the barefoot because he didn't wear shoes. That was his ascetical offering to the Lord. Until finally the other bishops said, no way, you put on your shoes, you're an embarrassment to us. So he put on his shoes in obedience. This was St. John. 
we chose to have St. John as the patron of this monastery many years later because of the great blessings that we had received. By then we were Orthodox, of course. And one of the things that had happened early on in our in this history of this monastery is we had a bishop of another jurisdiction who turned viciously against us. And then we got a call from a priest who told us, in his own diocese, told us that this bishop was looking to try to find a way of confiscating our land and that we needed to get out and get into another jurisdiction quickly. Well, Father Paul and I were simple monks then, so we didn't really need any canonical release. But we didn't know what to do. And I said, where would we go? And then I got a conference call from two priests from that jurisdiction. And they said, you need to go either to the Moscow Patriarchate or to the Russian Church Abroad. And I said, well, I can't go to the Moscow Patriarchate because there's of the Articles of Thomas that wouldn't allow us to found a monastery under them in this country because the OCA didn't accept, wouldn't, they had come carte blanche for this land. And so then, and they said, well, the church abroad. And at the time, the church abroad was not in communion with Moscow. But mostly, I thought of the Moscow Patriarch, of the Russian church abroad as just being a bunch of angry, um, politicized uh, Russians who just didn't, weren't very friendly. Little did I know. And so my friend told me, you need to go. He said, I said, I don't know what to do. And he said, you need to go to San Francisco for the glorification of Blessed John. He said, what better time to ask for help from a saint than at that moment when he's being glorified? And I said, I'm under house arrest. And he said, sneak out. So I flew to San Francisco. I stayed in the guest quarters of the Capuchin Franciscans uh, in San Francisco, which at their house was only a 20 minute walk to Holy Virgin Cathedral. So I took the back route so no one would see me. And I arrived about two hours before the glorification. Uh, both, both lanes of the four lane boulevard in front of the cathedral were blocked off by the city because they expected thousands and thousands of people. Uh, and indeed, there was this huge trailer parked off to the left of the cathedral with a giant screen on it so that people could watch the glorification from outside. And there were two large screens, uh, one in the parish hall and, uh, and one in, uh, in the great hall because the church only holds 1100 and there were something like 50,000 people that came from all over the world and uh, so I figured I'm safe in this crowd so here I am I just I got there early and I went down to venerate the relics of blessed John still in the crypt and with tears in my eyes I lit a candle and I prostrated before his relics, and then I kissed the casket, and I asked St. John to please help us. We don't know what to do. We don't know where to go. And as I left and went out and up the steps to the street, and reminding you, there were no cars there. They weren't permitted. But just as I stepped out onto the sidewalk, a car pulls up and out steps the then Bishop Hilarion of Manhattan, who's now our Metropolitan. And Bishop Hilarion, as he got out of his car, and I saw that it was a bishop, I, this unknown monk from Bashan Island, went up to get his blessing. I said, Ladika, may I have your blessing? And he said, who are you? And I said, I am Monk Trifon from Bashan Island. We have a small OCA monastery near Seattle. And he said, how long are you going to be in the area? He said, you're going to be here in the next few days? And I said, yes. 
and then he wrote down a phone number and he said, call this number tomorrow afternoon and I will tell you where I will be and we can meet. Well, all there were something like, I, if I remember right, 60 priests that were going to come celebrate and all of the bishops of the church abroad from all over the world had assembled for this, plus perhaps 50,000 people. <coughs> he wants to talk to <coughs> me. I obviously knew this was a miracle. This was because of the intercession of St. John. So a couple days later, he told me, go to the candle stand and Father Serge will tell you where I am. And I went down to the parish hall. They had just finished a, a banquet and he was talking to three people. And when he saw me walk in, he immediately left and he came over and he said, let's sit here and talk. So we sat down. He said, would you like a glass of wine or a soda? And I said, well, because of what I have to talk about, perhaps a soda would be the best. <coughs> so we sat down and there I had this very man ask me, what's going on? Why, why do you want to leave? And, and I told him. And he said, well, let me talk to Bishop Kirill, and I'll get back to you. What's your number? So the next day I was called and I was summoned to the cathedral and we met in this very tiny little room off the sacristy so no one would see us. And I met with the two bishops. And the end result of that was they said, we will talk to Vladika Archbishop Anthony and you return to your home on Vashon Island and say nothing. And I did. <coughs> And a month to the day, they got a fax machine note telling us that we were now in the church abroad. That was the intercession of St. John. And I have been grateful to him ever since. We have his holy relic in our church. Uh, he is truly the guardian of this monastery, this holy man. So like the Chinese children, we became his children. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ our God, have mercy on us and save us.